What's up, guys? Based in the Brock Anderson here in this Criminal Minds, Season 14, Episode 7, 27. Uh, so, yeah, overall, pretty good episode. Uh, the moral for this one is actually one that I've seen done a lot worse and more heavy handed in other shows. So, I was really glad that they didn't like bang your head over just bam, 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 take our message. You're an evil person if you don't believe what we believe and all this stuff. So, um, yeah, it was. Fairly straightforward. And I, the one thing I will say as well is that they really tackled this idea of inequality in this country from a really, in my opinion, good standpoint. Because I feel like it's a lot more truthful to what's actually going on in this country. Because the inequality is not so much about, oh, well, you know, there's a ton of racism in this country. It's more so the rich and the poor. There's a lot of inequality there. Now, yes. In these poor neighborhoods, there does tend to be more African Americans, which it's not right. But it's that's that's the real issue, and it's because a lot of the politicians in Washington are more focused on money and where are they going to make their money and who's giving them the most money to get into office. Um, so yeah, that's really where I think it it boils down to, and I feel like that's something that was more the focus here. Like yes, the kids that were doing this, they were African American. But they talked about they feel like their brother died because they weren't as important, because they lived in this poor neighborhood. And honestly, probably does happen a lot. I mean, when you think about the hospitals, the hospitals are not necessarily in these poor neighborhoods. They're probably closer to the rich neighborhoods. And so, yeah, they might look at it and not necessarily say... It's, it's not based on, oh, well, these kids are black and these, you know, these people that need help over here, they're not, so we're going to go help them. I think it just honestly would come down to, well, this is closer, so we're going to go there first, and then we'll send a dispatch over there to help. And yes, it's not right, but I think that's probably what happened, more than likely. Um, now, obviously, it's a fictional story, but it probably happens in real life, and I wouldn't doubt that that's part of the thinking whenever they're looking at where to send ambulances if there are multiple emergencies at once. So, yeah, I think it was, it was well done, and again, it wasn't in a way that bashed your head in with its message like it was well set up to show like these guys what they're doing is wrong their message is something that we need to talk about and even Prentice, she's like we can't do anything about it but we can at least tell the story so somebody who can do something about it can see it and hopefully make a change um and i feel like that's very important but again I think that comes down to we need to get a lot of these greedy politicians that are just in it for the money. We need to get them out of Washington because, I mean, I would say a large majority <laughs> of all the politicians are just focused on what can I do to make myself more money? <laughs> um, so that's just my opinion. I don't want to get huge into a political debate on this, but yeah, I, that's kind of how I feel because I, I mean, I don't think race really defines anybody. I think we're all human, we're all Americans in this country for the most part. Um, so that's, we, we need to be focused on helping all Americans, like around the board, but it turns out that people most of the time don't care if you don't have the money to help get them back into office. So they're like, ah, you know what, that issue, we'll, we'll talk about that later, even though it's hurting a majority of Americans. So, um, but again, sorry, I don't, I don't mean to get all political. It's just because it was brought up in this episode that that's kind of what was on my mind. Uh, the other stuff going on around it though, first of all, with Alves. So of course, in the last episode, it ended with this notion of he's going to be benched. We're not going to see him in the field. And then this episode starts and it's a manhunt going on for a guy going around stabbing people. I'm thinking, okay, so I feel like this was done on purpose. I feel like they're showing that this is down Luke's alley, so there's probably going to be a point where Emily realizes she needs his expertise and she gives him a chance, and that's basically what happened. Now, there's good and bad to it, because on the one hand, good that Emily realizes she needs Luke and his expertise in this episode, and she doesn't, you know, <sighs> I get the rules are the rules, but also, you needed him in this. You needed what he does well, and to not use him because, oh, well, the rules say this... It's kind of like, okay, but you're not, I mean, you're not necessarily saying, okay, well, he, he did something really bad, so he's just not going to be of use to us at all. No, you, you need to solve this case. You need to catch these guys, and Luke specializes in doing that. So I'm glad she wasn't so, like, stubborn and focused on, oh, the rules have to stay the same, and we can't make any exceptions. 
to the point where now the the guys are getting away with it because Luke is benched and he can't help out. Um, however, the bad side of it is the fact that it was just in the last episode that he made this mistake and went against her orders. And I feel like that's just too soon to do it. And maybe in the in the timeline of the show, maybe it's been a few weeks. But for us, I mean, for me, it's only been a day because I just watched the last episode last night. So it's not even really been that long for me. But even if you're watching it live, it's only been a week since Luke made the mistake that got him benched. And now all of a sudden he's being let back into the field. So that's really a quick turnaround and it kind of undercuts a lot of the emotional decisions made at the end of last episode. So... In my opinion, that wasn't very well handled, but maybe it'll just... They're they are kind of streamlining it. They're like, you know what? We're not going to keep him bench for too long because we know Luke needs to be out in the field. That's what he specializes in. But I kind of would have liked it if we had a couple episodes where maybe it isn't his specialty, so they don't need him out in the field. And we get to see his interactions with, you know, Garcia whenever he has to stay back with her because he can't go out in the field with the team. Um... But now it seems like, oh no, he, he got to go out in the field and there wasn't even really a, a conversation about it either. Like, Prentice decides she needs him and then she just tells him good job after he's done and he caught the, the younger of the brothers. And then we just move on and we don't really talk about like, hey, good job today. just want to say, still on thin ice, but I appreciate the fact that you came in, you handled the job, you did it. So, step in the right direction. None of, none of those conversations happened. We just sort of moved on with it. Um... But, I don't know, some people may have preferred that. I I didn't, though. <laughs> I would have preferred a little conversation. Uh, the stuff with Prentice and Mendoza. Has Mendoza appeared on the show before? Because if he has, I don't remember him. If he hasn't, then this seems very fast and out of nowhere. Um, I mean, I kind of saw what they were doing throughout most of the episode. So at the end, whenever he was like, yeah, maybe we can you know, go, go get some food and maybe go to a baseball game. I'm just like, okay, so they were setting up a romance between the two of them. Because that's... It's the feeling I was getting, just some of the looks they were sharing and all of that. Um, but yeah, if if they just met today, I, I'm pretty sure they just met on this case, right? Because when Emily introduced herself at the beginning, it seemed like they were just meeting. So it does seem very sudden to just be like, oh yeah, I know we just met today and we just worked on this one case together, but want to go out? <laughs> just Does that happen? I mean... I guess sometimes it can. I guess sometimes you could just meet somebody and be like, hey, you want to go grab drinks later and then maybe something to eat? But it still seems very sudden, especially for Prentice. She's not normally seen like the dating type. She seemed very focused on her job. So I don't know. It just seems sort of out of nowhere. Maybe it'll turn into something sweet. But for right now, I'm just kind of, I was a little thrown off at the end. I'm like, okay, so that's what they were setting up. I thought, I, mean, I honestly thought that maybe there would be a few flirty lines thrown in at the end. But to actually have them be setting up a date just seemed a, a step, maybe a jump too far. <laughs> um, but yeah, aside from that, uh, the only other thing to, to talk about was the one moment that did kind of show, and honestly, I feel like the show has done a good job of showing this side of things, um, just how dangerous it can be to let the public in on too much information. And it's funny because there is, I mean, obviously a lot of what's happened over the past couple of years in our country there's been a lot of talk about the the prospect of information and how much is too much information um, and what is true information and what is false information and what is misleading information, all of that. And I feel like this show's done a really good job of showing in these scenarios, this is the stuff that could happen if you let on too much information before it needs to be. You know, there's a manhunt going on for African-American man in a green jacket with a bandana and a machete. And he's going around stabbing people. And this guy, all he hears is African-American man, green jacket, machete. And sure, it was a pipe, but, I mean, in his rush, he sees an African-American man in a green jacket. And he thinks, oh, this could be the guy. And, you know, shoots him. And thankfully, the guy pulls through. But I feel like this show has always done a good job of showing, like, how detrimental the media can be. You know, whether it's they get this information and get it out to the public too soon. Or they get this information out and the, the killer sees the information and sees that the FBI is on to them and it changes their MO or changes their their strategy. Um, so I feel like, yeah, another good example of in this scenario, I mean, it sounds like a good idea to be like, hey, here's the description of the man. We need people to give us information. 
But unfortunately, there are some people out there who they'll get that information and be like, oh, I can, I see this guy, I've got my gun, I can handle this. And then we end up getting the shooting of an innocent man. So, uh, yeah, it's, I, I like the, the balance that they show. Like, they, they made it very clear, yes, this was bad that this happened, but it's what they needed to do. It's part of their job, and Prentice is not to blame for what happened. So, um, yeah, I always like whenever they have those moments. Mainly also because I don't really like the media, and I, I do like this sh this show really shows just how bad the media can be. Uh, but anyways, that's it for this first episode. On to the second one. See you there. And now for episode 8, Ashley. And I'll admit, like, I wasn't really into this one as much. It just, it was kind of a, a typical one. I actually kind of called one of the elements of it pretty early on because, I don't know, just the way they set it up with this family being shot, um, husband and wife, and then the daughter gets taken. In my mind, I'm thinking, let me guess adopted right and my first thought was like this was a dad coming to get his adopted daughter back because there didn't seem to be any other possibility really as to what happened so I called that pretty early on I didn't call the fact that obviously it was not her father but the father of another adopted girl that lost his his daughter that was given up for adoption um but yeah I mean for the most part I was just kind of watching I wasn't really like connecting with anything it was okay but that ending man that was some emotional stuff, just watching the guy break down. I wasn't even really a fan of his acting for the most part, but that final scene with him where he's seeing the the funeral video of the daughter, that did get me. That did get me pretty emotional. I was like, okay, he brought it at least with the final performance, so that's good. But yeah, the rest of it, him acting all crazy and stuff, wasn't that good, unfortunately. I don't know, just something about it seemed off. Like... He seemed like he was trying to force this anger and aggression, but he didn't seem like he was really feeling it in the moment. Um, so that's just, I mean, that's my take on it as, a, as an actor. <laughs> so, but, I mean, overall, it's perfectly fine. You know, the, the story behind it was, it was interesting, you know, seeing that this guy gave up his daughter for adoption and then she dies and he blames her parents. Although, I, I think I may have missed something because Garcia said she looked to see if any other adoption parents had been killed or murdered um and maybe she was only looking for specifically murdered in the same way like shot in their bed and then the daughter taken because i'm pretty sure they found out that the girls or his daughter's adopted parents were both shot in their car <laughs> so i don't really know exactly why she missed that because <laughs> i assume we were going to find out he made it look like an accident but no it was it was not made to look like an accident. They were shot in their car, so clearly this was a murder. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what happened there. I, I again, I may have missed something, and there's something that she wasn't looking for that ended up being how he killed the parents. I, I don't know. Um, the stuff with Rossi as well was perfectly fine. Yeah, I I do like his relationship with Crystal. Krista. Crystal, I think is I think is her name. I'm gonna have to look at that again. Or. Trying to remember it next time she pops up. But, I mean, I like their little relationship. It's it's enjoyable. It's sweet. I like him realizing at the end, after watching the video with the daughter, like, yeah, I mean, she didn't have the perfect life and she died early, but you know what? She lived a good life still. <laughs> she had a good life. Sometimes it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And so in that moment, he's like, you know, I don't have to have the perfect proposal. I'm just going to... Let her know how I feel. I will say it, it did kind of hit me. I'm like, thank goodness she said yes, because how awkward would that have been? They come up the elevator, all of this decoration, the, the team is like, she said no. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> also, Joe Man Mantea, Man Mantoya? I don't, I don't remember. Mantegna? <laughs> I, I, I want to say it's Mantegna, just because that's how it's spelled. But can do a pretty decent Elvis impression. I... I didn't realize this, but listening to him do the Elvis impression was pretty hilarious and spot on. Um, so yeah, there were some good elements in it. Overall, this episode until the end was just kind of forgettable, though. Like, not really one that's going to impact me a whole lot. But I will remember at least the, the final elements for, the, for this episode. Um, but aside from that, there's nothing really else I can think of that stood out as really good or really bad. It was all just okay. So that's it for this one. On to the next one. See you there. 
And finally, episode 9, Broken Wings. So, pretty emotional episode, especially if you're somebody who's been through seeing a loved one go through rehab and deal with all of the steps of getting sober. Um, personally, I, I did lose a family member due to drug addiction, uh, but it wasn't a family member I was particularly close with. So, this didn't really hit home with me, but I can imagine if anybody was dealing with that or has dealt with that, I feel like they did a pretty good job, and maybe I'm wrong because, again, I don't really have the experience, but I feel like they did a good job of just showing how important it is, you know, for there to be a support system, really, for people who are going through this, um, and just how sometimes the best decisions are not just to be there for them, but sometimes to not be there in a way. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but it kind of realizing when you're enabling and I think they, they showed kind of both sides of it. How some people, they needed that support. They needed, you know, they showed the the one guy who was the really, you know, I, I was hoping to see him get a little bit more of a comeuppance other than his business partner um, essentially finally telling him off and be like, no, enough is enough. But yeah, we see for him, he's not really giving the support that the people need to get healthy and get sober. But on the other side, Tara, when she finally let... Um, Daryl, I think was his name, when she finally let him go, that was the the rock bottom moment he needed to realize, okay, I need to I need to get right because I'm not right. So it's kind of an interesting balancing act, and everybody's different, so everybody's gonna need different help. Uh, but I feel like they they showed that a little bit with how different everybody was and giving us a little bit of a glimpse into some of these people's lives. But all in all, it was it was perfectly fine, you know. The the story with Tara and her ex-husband, I I feel like, I don't know, I I feel like I really have mixed up Tara's backstory, because I, I thought I remembered her visiting an ex one time, but maybe that was just like a boyfriend, like an ex-boyfriend or something, but they seemed surprised to find out she was married, so I guess she wasn't married before, or something, I don't know. <laughs> That's part of, that is one criticism I will make is sometimes they don't do a good enough job of keeping us engaged in the personal lives of the main characters. And so there are times whenever they bring something up and it's just like, wait, but I thought that was already, it wasn't already talked about. Or they'll bring up something and be like, wait a minute, I don't remember this at all. <laughs> um, so it's just, it, it does kind of show itself at times. For the most part, they do a good job though of keeping me invested in the personal lives. And, I mean, again, I wasn't sitting here going like, wait, I, I don't know about any of this, so now I'm just confused and I don't like this at all. No, I still enjoyed it. I still had really a, a good connection to what she was going through. It's just for my initial reaction whenever they're like, oh, crap, it's her ex-husband. She was married? For me, I'm going, wait, I thought she, what? I thought she was married to another guy. <laughs> and now this is her ex-husband that apparently nobody knew that she was married before and now my brain is just <laughs> I'm, I'm so confused um, but yeah uh, as far as the unsub in this and the case involved we've seen I think Angels of Mercy before and it always it really is kind of a terrifying thought to have an Angel of Mercy out and about just thinking I'm doing this for a good reason I'm killing these people because I'm putting them out of their misery <laughs> Um, so anytime it pops up, it always does sort of make me go, ugh, <laughs> can't even imagine. Uh, but yeah, again, the, the guy that was pretending to give help, I, that was probably the only thing I didn't like about this episode is he was being so, I don't know, over the top, like obnoxiously arrogant that I really thought they were building it up to be like, haha, in your face. And they didn't like, I, I think back to the tall man episode and we had that moment where the guy you know, that was messing around with JJ's sister and causing these girls to fall in love with them, basically, and then sort of tossing them aside. Um, we had a moment where he was being, like, kind of led along by JJ, and he's just like, oh, she she really did care about me? Like, kind of that feeling of you wanted to sock the guy in the face for what he did to Rosalind. And then at the end of the episode, they had the girl Bethany slap him across the face. I'm like, yes! I was expecting something along those lines to happen to this guy. Because just how obnoxious he was being, I'm like, okay, they're setting this up, right? They're setting this up for him to just get decked or 
something taken away, locked away. They're going to find something that he's been doing that's illegal and shut down his business or let the let his partner that doesn't seem I don't know. He he didn't seem great. Like there there were still moments when he's like, "Well, I mean, we were just he wasn't really doing the the work, so we had to let him go." And not necessarily innocent in the whole thing, but he seemed at least a little bit more decent. Um, and he was the one that ended up standing up to him, but I thought there was going to be a lot there, there was just going to be something else, something more that made me go, yeah, get him. And instead it was just that one moment. It's like, enough is enough. And I'm just like, okay, I guess I guess that's that then. We're not going to get anything else with him. We're done. Okay, then. Uh, but that was just, I don't know, my, my own personal opinion. I wanted a bit more of a comeuppance for that guy. But yeah, all in all, perfectly fine episode. Kept my interest. Nothing really bad about it. That's about it. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these three episodes? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss. All that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe. Future Criminal Minds reviews. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Peace out.